Hello. Today we're going to talk about number formats in Excel. Now this is a pretty good introductory topic. So uh, what we're talking about here happens on the Home tab in the number group. These are your number formatting tools. So you've got ones over here which are related to increasing and decreasing decimals. These right here are no common number formats. This drop down here is the bigger menu of more date formats. This dialog box here is how you can get in-depth number formatting. I'm going to go in-depth at times and superficial at times. And so, as I said, this is a pretty good place to get started with Excel if that's what you're trying to do. So I'm going to look at five different formats. There are more, and there's all kinds of customizations. And I'm going to look at these three different numbers. Each one of them kind of has some unique attributes. This one right here is a larger number, which could benefit from commas. This is a negative number, which is weird in terms of number formatting. And this one is a smaller number. Um, oh, I lost a decimal place there. All right, it has, mul it has more than two decimal places is what makes it special. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is play around with the comma format. So this is the weirdest of them all. It's, it, in some ways, it's predictable because people understand commas. They help to make numbers more readable for folks. But it also has some weird implications. So if I click on this first value here and I apply the comma format, I get the comma where you would expect to get the comma, but I also got two decimal places, which probably wasn't expected. right? You can see in the adjacent cell that it didn't have decimal places. Now it does. Now I don't think that's any kind of an issue at all, because if you know how to format numbers in Excel, you can either increase the number of decimal places or decrease the decimal places. I, I clicked it too many times, so you hear that beep or ring or whatever that is. but. Uh, I don't really care how many decimal places you get by default because that's a very easy thing to manipulate. Uh, sure, you are wasting space by having two decimal places, but the I think the reason that happens is uh, is for consistency's sake. And now I will revisit that. I know that there's a tricky thing going on here. So I'm going to take this one here, and this will lead us into the tricky territory. So let's say I want to format that as a, a comma. You would think, I would think that you should think that nothing's really going to happen because this number is not big enough to benefit from a, a comma and it already has two decimal places. And you can kind of see that here. But what I want to point out is that the minus sign is gone and it has parentheses around it, which is just weird. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute. And then this one here, I'm going to apply the comma format. You could probably guess how that's going to go. There's not going to be any decimal places. It got rounded, which probably was surprising if you haven't done this before. Instead of 1.234, it's now 1.23. So you just got to see that when you format a number, it's going to get rounded appropriately. If you want that decimal place back, you can get it. If you want additional padding, you can go get those too. If you want to get rid of all the decimal places, you can. And I'm just going to sit here for a minute and talk about this. So this right here... Uh, 1.234 got rounded down to 1. Sometimes people are really concerned about that. Oh my gosh, what happened to my data? I can assure you that rounding it has no effect on the actual number. You can see that up here in the formula bar, that the normal, the starting value is still there. When you round a value, you're just, you, all you're doing is changing the number of spaces that are displayed to the user. You are just trying to make this clean and easy to read. You are not making actual modifications to the data. Now, I'm sure some of you are sitting here thinking, you know, I clicked on that comma button. That started off saying general, which means no formatting. You notice when I click comma, it actually changed to accounting. I do not have an explanation exactly for why that happens. I guess the root of that is that comma is not actually a cell style. It's kind of more indicating that you want to add commas. If you look down in this drop down menu there is no comma style so it just kind of happens to default to accounting when you do the comma style so this weird stuff like that is actually more uh, related to accounting formats than it is to commas so you notice here i don't actually have a comma in more number formats i don't actually have a comma i mean you could kind of build it but uh, it's weird because i want all i wanted to do was talk about commas and Instead, we end up talking about accounting, which is up next. So I'm going to format these as accounting format, and you're going to see it's exactly the same. This is accounting, and now you see that the difference between that and that, you see how they're both accounting? If you look up here in the number group, 
this video is turning out way more complicated than I wanted it to be, but uh, I also don't see a way to avoid it. So notice that these are both accounting style, and that's where. And now at this point, you might understand what's up with that uh, with that set of parentheses. Parentheses are actually related to that accounting format. So notice the difference between here and here is that when you put it in an accounting format, you get a dollar sign on it. And not only do you get a dollar sign on it, but you get this strange alignment. It's kind of like a justified deal where the uh, dollar sign's on the left and the value's on the right. If the number's large, it looks normal. But if the value is small, it looks kind of weird because there's a big gap between the dollar sign and the uh, value. But that's accounting format for you. I'm going to show you currency now. Trust me, I plan to circle back to some extent here. So I don't see currency. Currency is not one of the superficial options, but it is in here. So I go currency, and now let's talk about the difference between currency and accounting. The difference between currency and accounting is a couple things. The one that stands out to me is the alignment of the, uh, of the dollar sign. In accounting, the dollar sign is left aligned. In currency, it's just on the left of the number, but you know, Pretty similar. I do want to point out that both accounting and currency add decimals. All number formats add decimals. Humans like decimals. They make de they make large numbers easier to read. Computers could care less about de uh, commas. So let's go in here and go dig around for a minute. So I just did that currency. I want to show you what the advanced options look like. Under currency, there are different formats. The default format is that one, where your negative signs get displayed like negative signs. You also have the option of denoting negative numbers as being red. You also have the option of denoting negative numbers as being uh, wrapped in parentheses. You also have the option of having them being red and in parentheses. I'm just going to change it up just so you can see. And so now, notice I had to get three examples deep for you to understand why there's parentheses there. So these are, these are accounting conventions. I am not an accountant. If you're an accountant, you certainly know all about these things, but in, in business, they kind of don't like negative signs and they find ways to uh, not list those. So that's what this is all about. So when in the world of accounting and currency, you are going to see parentheses and they are somewhat optional. As you saw when I went into the options here, if you don't want to see those, if you're just a normal person and you want your negative signs to be written like negative signs, it's an option. It's just not the default. And that is what we ran into with the commas, is the defaults. All right, this has been long-winded. Trust me, I'm almost done. So percent is actually, in some ways, it's more complicated. I used to be a math teacher. Uh, so I've taught people about percentages and how to convert them. I have no intention of teaching anyone anything about percentages today because I can't do that in 10 minutes, let alone the one minute I want to spend on this. If you take this value here, it's a large number, it's one, two, three, four, five, and you convert it into a percent, it's going to be bad. It's going to get a hundred times larger. The, I think the likelihood that someone would want that to happen is pretty low. This is going to be a better, ex I'll do it here too. It's not going to be cool, but I just did it. You see what's happening? These numbers, if you're, if you're mathematically inclined, you're seeing the, these values are going up by a hundred. Are they getting multiplied by a hundred? Here's a smaller number where we can illustrate these things easier. So 1.234 is going to become 123.4%, which is probably not what you want. Notice I have to increase the decimal places to display that decimal. Um, so just simply taking a decimal and formatting it as a percentage is going to get you in trouble. Um, so, and the root of this is that there's some math that needs to happen. If I'm a just normal person and I want to create a decimal, I mean a percent, what I would do is I would go like 3.5, manually enter the percent sign, press enter, and you get the number you want. As opposed to going 3.5 and turning it into a percent and you get a number that's off by 100, uh, right, a, a factor of 100. So if you need to work with percents, I would just manually enter the percent sign. But you right, it's like, at, th at this point, we're not talking about percent, and we're not talking about formatting percentages. We're talking about we're talking about the underlying math, which is well beyond the scope of this video. And the last one I'll talk about is fraction. Not because I think you're ever going to use it, but I just wanted to fix something in this menu that is, you know, less common. So this right here is a whole number, not an interesting fraction at all. This one has a decimal place. Let's see what happens when we turn that into a fraction. So 0.45 got turned into four ninths, which 
four ninths is not 0.45, but it's pretty close. 0.234 is going to get turned into some kind of fractional equivalent, like a quarter. Uh, and as you can see, that is a uh, that's an estimation. Point one or point two three four is not a quarter, but it's pretty close. I'm not interested in uh, discussing fractions with y'all, but I did want to show you just uh, you know one of the more uh, or less common formats. So just to kind of recap, you've got some superficial options here. You've got tools for manipulating the uh, decimals here. You've got a, a library of more uh, number formats here. If you want to customize those number formats, this is your tool for that. As you can imagine, we could spend like 20 hours doing all the various options you could do, and all I could do is touch on them in 20 hours. I'm just trying to get you started and show you how this works. So notice that the way that you format your numbers makes them look quite different. And in the case of like a percentage, you can really screw up your data if you uh, are not thoughtful about what you're doing. So these are tools that you can use to format your numbers. Thanks for watching.